Good morning. good morning. It is so good to see everyone here this morning. We are especially glad to see our visitors. If this is your first time with us, welcome. We have some information for you if you are interested in the narthex. We have some welcome packets out by the, uh, out by the welcome table. So uh, leave any information that you so desire with us that we may be in contact with you. And we are glad to have you with us this morning. Let me begin with a few verses from Psalm 35, verses 9 and 10, and verse 28. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in His salvation. My whole being will exclaim, Who is like you, O Lord? You rescue the poor from those too strong for them, the poor and the needy from those who rob them. My tongue will speak of your righteousness and of your praises all day long. Once again, we welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We welcome you. There are a number of announcements in your bulletin this morning. I want to uh, highlight just a couple. We do have Bible study here on Wednesdays. Uh, and we would like to see this place just absolutely packed with whoever would like to, to, uh, to, to study the Bible with us. Our Wednesday morning women's group, um, okay, I've snuck in a couple times. <laughs> mostly because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm their tech support. But uh, they have a really good time. And, and it's, it's a fun time for all the ladies. And, and they, they do get a lot of good study and done. And on Wednesday evening, Pastor Thomas has a Bible study that is, uh, you know, anybody who's been with us since we brought him on board, he has a way of spinning stories that you're used to from the Bible into ways that you've never thought of before. And that continues on Wednesdays. It is, it is very enlightening. Uh, I think all of us who are, who are there on Wednesday evenings learn a lot, and we would invite everyone to come and join us. We have uh, a number of announcements in the bulletin, as I have said before. Now, please join me in reading the church covenant. I will read it, and you can follow along in the bulletin just silently. Having been led by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and having been baptized, we affirm our covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We shall, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, walk together in Christian love, work for the growth of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, support its worship, its ordinances, and doctrines, and give it sacred preeminence over all human institutions. We shall contribute toward the spreading of the gospel in all the world, to the relief of those in need, and to the support of the church's ministry. We shall educate our children in the Christian faith and share with others the knowledge of God's salvation through Jesus Christ. We shall be exemplary in our living, honest in our dealings, and fearful or faithful in our commitments. We believe that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, and we shall avoid experiences and habits which may defile the body, mind, and spirit, thereby hindering our witness. Remembering the teaching of our Savior, we promise to love and uphold one another in prayer, to help one another in sickness and distress, to demonstrate Christian sympathy and courtesy, and to seek prompt reconciliation when offended. When removed from this fellowship, we shall as soon as possible unite with, one, with another church to continue our work for the glory of God. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all remain silent before him.
Amen. Hear now these words of invocation. If any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, who is Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is propitiation for our sins, and not for ours alone, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore, ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking henceforth in his holy way. Today, beloved God, it is with faith we will witness the baptism and also take this, our holy sacrament of communion, to our comfort and worship our God in spirit and in truth. Amen. From Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. We give thanks to thee, O God, for those who have accepted our Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, and who now are to be put on Christ in his appointed way. Receive them, O Lord, according to the promise offered through thy well-beloved Son. May they go with him into likeness, in the likeness of his death, and may they rise in him to walk in the newness of life. Grant that these and all of us may enjoy the benediction of the everlasting life with thee and the promised home above. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first candidate for baptism is Barry Brown. Mary Wayne Brown Jr. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, and on the third day he arose from the dead, and now sitteth at the right hand of God the Father. From there he should come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I believe. Amen. On that confession of your faith, Barry, I now. You okay? Put <laughs> your one hand over your nose. Yeah. All right, Barry's a little nervous. Okay. By the confession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Just bring your knees, right? This coordination represents purity and love, the purity and love that you now receive from our Lord and Savior. Go with God. Amen. Amen. Come on now. From Acts chapter 3, verse 38, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Our next con candidate is Connie Brown. Amen. County Joy Brown. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, but on the third day he arose from heaven, and now he arose from the dead, and now he has ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from that place he shall judge both the living and the dead. 
Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. On the profession of your faith, I now baptize you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're right. Okay. <laughs> in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please accept this white coronation is a symbol of God's love and purity. May you walk in Christ. Amen. From John chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Our third candidate for baptism is Jason Brown. Amen. <laughs> walk down there with purpose. You okay? Turn this way. It's your full name. Jason Emmett Brown. Jason Emmett. Praise God. Jason, do you believe God uh, is the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth? And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Do you believe on the third day he rose? Yes. And now he is seated into heaven, and he sits on the right hand of God the Father, and from there he is judging both the, uh, the quick and the dead, which means the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, yes. the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Yes. On the profession of your faith, lucky nose. I now baptize you, Jason Emmett Brown, move forward. I want to hit your head. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please accept this white coronation. It is to identify God's purity and love for you, oh God. Amen. Chapter 2, verse 38. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved God, I seem to have one more coronation left. This coronation identifies God's love and purity in our lives. Perhaps one of you can use this coronation. It is waiting for you whenever you are ready. Hear now these words of prayer. Holy and righteous Father, who beloved Son, Christ Jesus, and for the forgiveness of sins, for he did shed his precious blood and gave this commandment to his disciples that they should teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God, would you hear our prayers for these who have been baptized? For Barry, for Connie, and for Jason. God, we thank you for the Brown family who came forth today to make a public profession of their faith by baptism. May they be faithful to the covenant of Christians. May they receive the fullness of thy grace. And finally, may they receive the gift of eternal life in and through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Colossians 2, 12, and chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. 
and you were buried with Him in baptism, in which you were also raised with Him through faith in the working of God, who raised Him from the dead. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hid with Christ in God. Amen. Let's take a moment and greet each other on this chilly but bright and sunny Sunday morning. Come on, get up. seats. This is, of course, the first Sunday in February. It is a communion Sunday. We have just celebrated baptism, but there's also another meaning for February. This is Black History Month. Black History Month started out as the Negro History Week back in the 1926 time frame by a Dr. Uh, Connor Goodson, I believe, who was a uh, Harvard-educated African-American who wanted to contribute the remembrance of all of the contributions that have been made in our society by the African-American community. In 1976, it expanded into Black History Month. Gerald Ford proclaimed that, and it has continued every year since. As we enter into Black History Month, the, uh, the gospel team has chosen a couple of selections that pay tribute to that, as they are uh, both uh, African-American spirituals. The first will be, We Shall Not Be Moved.
As Pastor Melvin prepares to work his way out from uh, changing, let us offer a prayer for the offerings that we've received this morning. God has so richly blessed us. Uh, for those of you who were here yesterday, He blessed us with a fantastic meeting. We as a church now have a, a, a pretty much laser focus on one task that we want to do this year. And we're going to do everything we can to move in that direction. That's going to take an offering, not just of money, but of everyone's talents. So keep that in mind. One of the things that, that Kathy keeps talking to us about is we need to learn how to delegate. Well, guess what? You guys are the target. So, we'll be, <laughs> so here we come. But anyway, we, we had a great meeting. Uh, a, a good time was had, we got a lot of work done, and uh, we just want to take this church and, and give it to God and let Him bless it and let us be a reflection of His glory. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, it is our privilege and our honor to be able to call You Father. You have blessed us with so many talents. You have blessed us with so many resources that we return just a portion of those resources back to you in the form of our monetary offerings and in the form of our abilities given to this church. We ask, Lord, that you would multiply those gifts, that you would use them not only here within the four walls of this building, but throughout the Lehigh Valley, the state of Pennsylvania, the country of the United States, and throughout the world. We ask a special blessing on all these offerings, and we pray this in the name of your precious Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, we'd like you to join us. Turn to number 349, now, Trust and Obey, and we're going to do verse 1, 3, and 5. <laughs>
Amen. Who sent my wife back there? Who <laughs> sent? <laughs> Who sent my wife back there? All I hear is Mel. You okay? You need help? <laughs> Amen. What a joyous occasion. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Yes. A family of three committed themselves to Christ today. God is doing some miraculous work. A family of three, the father, the mother, and the son. Amen. Let's pair our hearts and minds now for our, our time of prayer. We have members who uh, on last week struggled with some health issues and we have a member of our congregation whose grandmother is is ill. Uh, I know of several losses uh, of people in our community. And so although we have a a joyous occasion that tells us that God is still calling his saints home. So as we baptize in those who have entered into the Lamb's Book of Life, God has need for some of them. And let us be prayerful for those who have encountered loss this season and those who are ill on this season. But if you know of anyone that I don't know of who is struggling with anything, be prayerful. Whisper their names that God may hear. Because God, again, he hears our whisper. Let us pray. So God, today we pray for those who we've spoken about, those who are grieving, those who are sick, in this church family and beyond. We pray, oh Lord, for those families who perhaps are struggling with heat and, and all sorts of things. We, we pray for the youth of our community, God, for we know that uh, they are also struggling. And so we, we pray for them. We, we pray for them, God. We pray that they will be bounded with you, God, and be reunited with you, and that they will follow you rather than following uh, what's fashionable and, and what's approved by their peers. And so we pray for them. And so, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is you who is the maker of all things and the judge of all men. And for that, God, we acknowledge and we bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which, yes, Lord, from time to time we have committed in both word and in deed. We have committed these things against thy divine majesty, O Lord, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. And for that, God, we are sorry. We repent of our sins today, God, and we ask you, God, that you will have mercy upon us. You will have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, God, for, the, for your son, Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and and grant today that we may hereafter live in the newness of life. Bless us today, Lord. As I look out on this congregation, God, I'm thankful. I'm extremely thankful. I'm thankful for those who thought it not robbery to come out. I'm thankful for those who are now watching us online. I'm just so very thankful and grateful to you today. I'm grateful for your presence and your power. I'm grateful, God, that you have given us a new day. For so many have not opened their eyes this morning. I'm grateful, God, that we're able to take our first breath and to greet you this morning with a good morning. So, God, to the to those who are struggling. 
let not your heart be troubled. For those who are dealing with grief and pain and all kind of issues, let God be your guide. For those who are seeking a new beginning, allow God to direct your path. So God, today we pray that you hear our prayers and that you will grant us peace which surpasses all understanding and that you will keep us in lockstep with you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is brought to us by Suzanne Davies. She will be reading 2 Corinthians. Chapter 5, verses 14 through 21. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. And this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. May the Lord touch our hearts in a special way through the scripture today. Amen. Our next music, in honor of communion, will be let us break bread together.
Today is a, a very special day. Uh, not only did we get a witness to celebrate the sacrament of baptism, but shortly we'll celebrate also the sacrament of communion. I'm so very thankful that today we witnessed three lives entering into the Lamb's Book of Life, which gives you salvation. And now you share in a promise that God has given all of his believers. For that, I'm thankful. There's a spirit of peace that dwells with us today because of your public profession of being saved. So we thank you again for that. It's that peace that comes with reconciliation. You're now reconciled with the Father. And now you're caught up in the love of Christ. And now you are joint heirs of his kingdom. I don't know about you, but I feel good knowing that I have an inheritance coming that I didn't work for. Amen. But in today's scripture, we look at Paul's letter to the church of Corinth. We look at it and we look at this notion of being a new creature or a new creation. He says that when in fact you become a new creation, that no one can be excluded, that God wants everyone to be included. But the part we should rejoice over is that he says that the old has passed away and the new has come. And so just for a while, let's explore what this new creation, this theme of a new creation means with a sermon entitled, Look at Me Now. Look at Me Now. Let us pray. God, thank you. God, we love you. God, help us and guide us. Amen. Look at me now. I think I need duct tape or something. Maybe. So what is this new creation, right? What does it look like and what does it mean when Paul tells this church that you are a new creation? He talks about reconciliation and, and being reconciled simply means to come into a right relationship with Christ. And can you put the scripture up one more time? And I want to look at this scripture because this scripture is important scripture. It, it lends itself to a, a point that every believer has to go through. We have to put down some things and recognize that it is Christ, right, that, that ultimately has, has the ability to give us um, the, the promise of, of salvation and a promise that, that's, that's given unto us from the Father. And so the scriptures say, for Christ's love his love compels us because uh, we are convinced. Now, first of all, you have to be convinced that he is the one that died once and for all, for all sin, which simply means that the sin that you have committed in the past and have yet to commit, that he died for that. He died for that. And because he died for that, that became a moment of reconciliation for us to God. And there's three factors that I want to uh, talk about today. And you ready? There's three factors that I want to talk about today in, in this new creature. What is this new creature? What does it look like? First of all, this new creature, we have a new intentions. New intentions. What are new intentions? Well, new intentions simply mean that we don't think the same way anymore. New intentions means that now we live and have our every, every being in Christ. Now, we, we do intend to lead a new life. But that's not only intentions that we have. With new intention comes new demands on your life. And simply because you have been saved by grace and you have a public confession of, of, of your saving or your feeling of being saved, your intention shall lie with God's intention. What is God's intention? God's intention is that first we love our neighbors as Christ has loved us. His intention said that because of his giving power, because of his mercy, and because of his grace, we should extend the same mercy and grace to everyone else. 
Our attention should be one of love, compassion, and patience. Now, what does that mean in the life of a, of a Christian? Are we always loving, <laughs> compassionate, and we always have peace? Absolutely not. But it means that our struggles began to get lighter and lighter as we move towards Christ. And our tensions change so people can see on the outward that we have, something has changed about us. Something is different about us. They, our, our smell looks different. There's a song that says, when I looked at my hands, they look new. When I looked at my feet, they look new too. And so now, because of what happened today, you are now a new creature. And being a new creature simply means that when you walk out of here, the world will see you different because your intentions are different. Not only is your intention different, he said we should have new values. New va what are our values? Our values are the driving force by which things uh, take form in our lives, things we do. The things you value before, you're no longer going to value those things. The world absolutely means, abs means nothing to you because, hear me out now, your values have to be in lockstep with the values of a Christian, the values of God. God doesn't value anything other than love. He don't value stuff at all. He don't value the fact that you're a good person. He don't value any of that. He values that your life belongs to him and that he is now leading you. Our value system is the engine by which this car is driven. New values, new intentions, new values, new affections. We're going to pause here for a while. Your affections are your feelings and your emotions. It's your reaction to things. It's how people see you. It's that button that could be pushed at a moment's notice. It's that thing your husband does to get you going. It's that thing your wife says to get you going. Jason, it's the things your parents says to make sure that, that <laughs> you do what you're supposed to do. But God said your affections now are new. We no longer react to things the way we did. We no longer look to ourselves to, so, to, to solve problems. Now we look to God. We no longer allow the world to disrupt our flow of peace and happiness. We no longer do these things because the Bible says now we are reconciled. And once and for all, God gave a man who was sinless to carry the burden of all our sin. And because of that, your affection should tell you now that you are ambassadors of Christ. The scripture says ambassador of Christ, which means literally you are now the mouthpiece of Christ. And the mouthpiece of Christ have to handle themselves in a certain way. Now, I must admit we're always saying that, but I can tell you I am not perfect all the time in being a mouthpiece for Christ. If you cut me off sometime early in the morning, I may say something or mumble something that's not too good. I must admit that, right? I am not perfect. You will never be perfect. Hey, that's Jesus calling now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He's on the main line. Tell him what you want. Amen. He keep calling. Put it on speaker so you can hear the sermon. Amen. Put it on speaker. And so now we're, talking, we're still talking about our affection, our affection, the things that drive us, which means that there is a, a, a clear distinction between your life before you got dunked <laughs> and your life after you got dunked. It means that that old stuff has now been passed away. It doesn't mean right away it's going to happen. It means you got to keep chipping and chipping and chipping and chipping and chipping until you get to the point where those problems that you used to have no longer bother you, right? Those people in your life that said no to you no longer bother you. It takes time. It's called sanctification. Your intentions now are to become sanctified, which is to set yourself apart from the world, but it's a lifelong journey. That's your intentions. The great thing about being in Christ is this. Not only are we uh, his ambassadors, the Bible clearly tells us that we are now inheritance of a kingdom that is not made with man's hands. 
I don't know about anybody in here, but I'm excited the fact that because I love Christ, that I am guaranteed to be royalty when this life is over. Somebody say amen. And I love the fact that even if I don't do it right all the time on this side, when this life is over, I am going to don my royal robe in heaven. And because I am working towards that royal robe, there is nothing that's going to stop me. Yeah, that's sometimes my values don't line up with Christ. I can be honest about that. My intentions are not always right, and my affections are always not in lockstep with Christ, but I can tell you this. Every single day, every breath I take is for Christ, and because it's for Christ, even when I stumble, it is he who picks me up. Even when I fall short, I'm reminded that no one is perfect. And because I fall short, it means that it's an opportunity for God to show me and bless me with another way of loving him. Look at me now. I'm a changed man. Look at me now. I'm no longer the same. Look at me now. I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Look at me now. Everything is new. Look at me now. The old is passed away. The assumption and implication in this scripture is this. We can't get to the point where we will come so far that we look in the rear view mirror, right? Because the rear view mirror has things that will beset us. It will change your intentions. It will change your value system. It will change your affection. See, we can't, it's cliche, but think about it. You can't drive forward looking through the rear view mirror. Everyone here today needs to hear this message. We can no longer look back. When you take this communion today, the implications of the communion is that God, I share in you the promise. I share with you the destiny in my life. I share with you the things that you want in my life. I share with you the purpose that you set forth for me. I share with you, so look at me now. It is just a way for us to remind ourselves of who we are. But more important, whose we are. Who we are is significant only if you are reminded whose you are. Today, when you take this communion, be reminded of whose you are. And do not be ashamed of telling somebody, look at me now. The things I used to do, I don't do anymore. You can remind me of what I used to be, but you can stay stuck. I'm not that person anymore. You can remind me of what I used to do. Thank you for reminding me that I'm not that person anymore. For it is the love of Christ that has compelled us to get to this moment. Be reminded with our new intentions and our new infections, affections, it means that you can no longer think that you can play God and be everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. We're not able to be everything to everybody. I want to empower you and the both of you for six months. Don't let anybody in this church give you any assignments. Do absolutely nothing for six months. Get to know us and allow us to get to know you and let God reveal to you your, your job in this church. I want you to grow in Christ first rather than growing in this church. Amen? It is important that we keep you in the fold, not because of Calvary, not in these four walls, we want to keep you attached to Christ because look at you now. You are a new creation and the old have passed away and the new is here to stay. That your affections lie in Christ. Now I have to, I'm compelled to give a call today and I'm going to tell you why. Because 
even when you're a new creation, some people forget that it's Christ who's God in their lives, right? And when we forget that Christ is God in our lives, we sometimes want to play God. We want to play God. So we have an inability to give everything over to God. So when you're a new creation, God wants to take everything from you. And so what happens in our human side is that we want to play God and fix our own problems. We want to play God and convince other people and to help other people. But sometimes God has to do the work. And so the plea today is if, if it's you, I don't know, that believes that you can fix problems in your lives that keep coming up, the things that continue to vex you, right? Knowing that you're a new creature, though, knowing that the old things have passed away, but you're still stuck in believing that you could do it. You're still stuck in believing that I can handle this. But you're quickly finding out that you can't. And so it's like being on a hamster wheel. You think you're fixing the problem? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I fix this problem, but this problem happens. You know, it's a shame when you fix one problem and another problem happens, right? You fix your furnace, now you got heat, but now you got water in your basement. I'm talking from experience, <laughs> amen. <laughs> but all I'm trying to say is this. We thank God for your public display that you're new creatures. But if there anyone here needs prayer because their new creature is, 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 is not on display and, and they believe that when they were baptized 20 years ago that something happened and that something happened is not happening no more. So the prayer is to take you back to the place where you first believed. Y'all get it? The place where you first believed. The place where you first believed is when you had the most zeal. That's when you had your burning desire to honor God with your life. God, I'm new. You walked out of here stomping your feet. You clapping your hands. And now, since that time until now, something has happened. You've been beaten down. You've been grinded and grinded into the dirt. Things ain't right all the time. You're holding on to something that you got to let go, right? So we got to take you back to that place where you first believed, where God was first in your life, and you felt new, and you felt free. But over the years, Time and time and time again, you've been beaten down. This has happened. I've lost this person. I've lost this job. I can't, I can't believe she left and he left. Now I'm divorced. Oh, what has happened to my life? We got to go back to the place where we became a new creature. We got to adjust our intentions. You gotta adjust our value system. You gotta adjust our affections. You with me? Amen. So if that's you, very quickly, we invite you up to pray with us. We have deacons available. We have people available to pray with you. And so I'll ask, is there one who will come for prayer? Now before anybody think about coming, listen to me here. This is what I do know about people. God moves on your heart. But when God moves on your heart, you look to your left and you look to your right and you think, if I go for prayer, what might they say about me? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? I said it once before. You know why? They're going to talk about you anyway. Hey. <laughs> huh? So is there one who will come? Is there one? Amen. Is there another? Take the time. Is there one more? Yeah, Deacons, come around this young man. This is this young man. <laughs> this young man means a lot to me. We didn't have heat in my home for for almost forty eight hours. And this young man came to my home and I evangelized him for 30 minutes. <laughs> and amen. And, and, um, and he's here today. And so I'm thankful. 
God, we are still God's mouthpiece. Is there anyone else before I began to pray? Let us pray. God, we are so very thankful for the confession of faith that was made on today. We're thankful that someone understands that somewhere along the way, their intentions, values, and affection changed. And because of that, they stand before your people to rededicate their lives to you, to give you all the glory. Though we don't know what transpired, but we do know at this point, they're looking to reconcile with you and become an ambassador of your word. So thank you, God. We thank you for purpose. God, we thank you for a broken furnace. Amen. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this young man's willingness to come before you and having the faith and the strength to do so. So God, we pray that you bless him, God. Bless his business, bless his family, and bless him, God, according to the measures of his needs. This is our prayer, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please see me afterwards, all right? Uh, amen. Let us now prepare our hearts and our minds for um, for communion. Amen. Does everybody have their communion kits? This little handy kit right here with a wafer and juice. Let's make sure everyone has a communion kit. Amen. I look out and I'm thankful we see a lot of new faces. We see return faces, amen. And so I'm thankful. You know, the world tells us that the churches are dying, and I say that's nonsense. I say the churches are just beginning, amen. God promised that the gates of hell would not prevail against his church. And every time I see a new face, I just get more and more inspired. So let us be mindful now that and be in meditation and prayer as we take upon ourselves this, our communion. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sin to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto thee, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But God, we do not presume to come to this thy holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but thy manifold great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thy on the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may live and grow thereby, and that being washed through his most precious blood, we may evermore dwell in him and he and us.
And when he had given thanks, he took the bread. And he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given things, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for remission of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink. Oh. It is very meet and right in our bounding duty that we should at all times in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Please join me as he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, the kingdom, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Love of God, can we now have the three candidates up front, please? The three candidates up front. I am going to do the Fred, bring him up front. I am going to do the benediction from here. And after the benediction, I ask that our Calvary family will greet our new members with the right hand of fellowship. Amen. You guys could turn towards turn towards your family. Look at them. Don't be scared of them. You see them? Amen. Connie, this is for you. May God bless you and welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. Amen. May God bless you, young man. You're welcome. May God bless you. And welcome. May we stand for our benediction. It has been quite a day. It's been quite a day, huh? There's been something else. And God has shown himself to be faithful. And in being faithful, he has blessed us with three new members, not only to Calvary Baptist Church, but three new members to to the kingdom. Look at that. It's working. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. And so the title of today's sermon was Look at Me Now. The new creature, the newness of life. Old things have passed away. All things now are new. Be inspired to show the world the newness that God has given you. The new smell that you have, the new look that you have. Everything is new. The things that beset you in the past can no longer beset you because God said, I have transformed you by the renewing of your mind the renewing of your mind. So you think different, you act different. The world sees you as different. Look at me now. So God, we thank you on today that you have given us opportunity uh, to worship and to give you praise. And so God, we ask that you would lead us out of this place, but never far from your hearts. 
that you would keep us in perfect peace with you. Thank you for being a God of love. Thank you for being a God of purpose. And now unto him who's able to keep us from stumbling. It is him who's able to present us faultless before his throne. It is he, it is he and he alone is the only wise one. It is him who has dominion and power and glory forever and forever. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen again. Beloved God, go greet your, your new sisters and brothers. Amen. Mary, give us some lively music, please, so we can shake some hands.